All right, everybody. Welcome back to our BD Swiss uh, webinar series here, the Ultimate FX Educational Webinar. Ultimate as well, as I think it's uh, definitely, and that's how I'm basing my webinar series for you guys, of course, here. As I think what's needed in the markets, what helps me, how I started, and uh, one of the first topics uh, which my colleague came up with as well, how actually, Frank, do you identify Forex trends? Not only Forex, but how do you uh, identify trends and opportunities, of course, and uh, making this an award-winning maybe strategy, but also award-winning uh, motivational ideas here to uh, trade the markets. As always, of course, as well, I've laid out here uh, a few uh, headlines, few ideas as well, and since the room is still filling up, which is great, sort of a bit of a delay here with some hiccup in our uh, trading software as well. But um, since we, uh, we always uh, come up with some headlines, I kind of uh, started to um, started to, to find a bit of a, a structure here for our session of course uh, the question how to how we find a trend in a market and uh, after this maybe uh, uh should have put the actually below these ones here how to find trend in the market first of all there are some technical indicators we can use i'll uh, go over these in the next say 45 minutes from now then we have the fundamentalists against the technicals fundamental uh, and uh, also against uh, the technical analysis, which one should be uh, used as well. There's a few ideas, of course, all actually easier uh, to, uh, to think of than, than uh, you might uh, think yourself. Of course, as well, impact on political and from political news. Remember uh, Trump and Brexit and of course uh, elections as we had it uh, just now in the US. Central banks, <clears throat> which uh, of course, identify and offer and show us trends there's another news event uh, in the us as well today as we speak kind of uh, we have the federal reserve with the OFMC open market committee and of course as well what can we learn from different markets how does the price of copper and water and orange juice and uh, what well, uh, uh, slaughtered pigs potentially could impact the market maybe not that much but uh, commodities as well against the uh, currencies in this case we take to take a look at and of course as well how we can learn and what we can learn from this and then of course let's keep an eye on potential a bit of a trading strategy uh, behind this uh, the market goes up or down how do we do we trade this giving you some practical ideas how does we how do we do in a sideways market and if the market doesn't even move that's not really so much for us here at bd swiss but i'm still i'm still kind of inclined to uh, to give you some insights on that if the markets do not move at all and of course as always if you have any questions please raise your hand interrupt me i would happily also open up the microphone for you if you prefer to talk to all of us here and uh, please keep in mind as well that any question, any question, of course, is worth asking. There is no a question. Gaspar, hey, you're back as well. So I'm seeing also a regular viewers here uh, back in our session. There's no question worth not asking. And if you think, ah, it's too dumb, it's too stupid to ask any question, the only question I, I would say is uh, stupid to ask is when I've already answered this beforehand and I noticed that you don't listen to me. But uh, in any case, with a smiley, of course, here uh, in this case, uh, please just uh, keep your question going in uh, because the likelihood that a question which you have also is interesting for any other viewer here is definitely the case that's what i also is have been doing looking back in time as well say about oh, how long ago was this 2007 actually when i started trading 2000 i started investing rather and then further and further down the road started trading that's also when i was asked questions in the webinar group and then uh, when i was a student as well back then student in the forex market and uh, of course the teacher also was back in the day and saying hey that's good keep the questions coming just keep asking the, whatever is uh, kind of interesting and uh, physically when i then also met my teacher uh, some uh, some years down the road it was a seminar in uh, barcelona with great food great people and a lot of talks then i found out that a lot of other people said ah you were the one who always kept asking questions now I'm on the other side, so uh, please, last but not least, uh, just uh, keep them uh, going and uh, keep asking whatever you need to ask. And if you would also like me not to mention your name, if you have a question, of course, I'll do that as well to uh, really uh, um, uh, keep your privacy also. So how do we find a trend in a market? The trend can be, of course, of various reasons we could see, and uh, it depends also on the time frame. So we should maybe also keep an eye on time frames. The longest time frames here, we going from the meter trader four platform here monthly chart and then also it depends on how much you want to zoom out or zoom in you could see something potentially say okay there is a trend we have a high point lower point lower point lower point lower point lower point 
the market is kind of trending, we can connect this and we can kind of use these uh, line tools here to draw a trend line. You can draw it from the extreme high, connecting these little uh, dots, if you or the, these little spots, if you like to. For me, it's rather the movement in general. And I see something like this, for example, kind of a lower this one here. It doesn't really, it doesn't really go to the exact point, but it's just like how you can connect price areas here and it's again there's nothing wrong or nothing correct really right if you do it this way that's also correct yeah if you would say okay there's a trend from a high point maybe it didn't really reach the high point but that's not important for you it's just important that you get the overall trend can do this also you can also kind of of course look at this in parallel lines here you can see oh does it actually even match and look at this you can see something here touches 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 the market keeps touching this trend line few times over and over and that means obviously there is obviously some importance here it seems that uh, this trend line has been or it's going to be respected or was respected by several other other traders as well could put the same a bit lower maybe not that clear but this one also would offer you something where you can see aha just by using a parallel line here you could get into a channel and this channel could potentially offer you some important or interesting insights and if you keep looking at it and kind of adding a trading strategy around it you could potentially make some money now one would say okay this is the monthly the long-term chart then you could go into the weekly chart could say oh there's another trend line we have something here we kind of connect these dots here and the market kind of kept breaking out of this trend line so how do we trade it accordingly right we'll go to this uh, later but you have a long term falling trend and then you have a short term kind of shorter term it's a weekly chart rising trend which uh, in this case uh, kind of could uh, offer you the idea of okay maybe the falling price market is over and the market keeps turning higher now back to the uh, question which i formulated how do we find the trend in the market? The basic thing is like looking from the left side of the chart where the market was starting to operate. This is kind of on the left down here, up to the right side of the chart here, which is up here. And then just simply, if you connect the two points, you can do this as well. It's like from this point here towards this area here right now, you would definitely say, let's remove these. Can I do this? Yeah, remove these. And these you can simply say the market moves from the lower market area here to a higher area here so the market seemingly is rising momentum that's one way of looking at it if you're marking it as a box could look at it from this perspective you could maybe say okay you try to get a few points which kept the kept the repetitively in the market see okay some support the market didn't fall further support as well somehow here and the market here found some resistance and we are kind of rather let me reduce this a bit it's just it's just like for the, for the sake of kind of showing you the direction uh, finding some resistance and you would maybe say eh, actually the market trends in a sideways pattern right so lower left so it's like bottom up here bottom up here again so where you would maybe say in the end it's just like it's a sideways market instead of an up down market which means as well you might use or you might want to use different parameters different ideas to trade the market but back to the trend here as well and one of the easy automated uh, way of uh, finding a trend is simply by using moving averages if you're clicking here on this navigator box you have first your account and then you have uh, uh, the different indicators here among among uh, lots of other things maybe you have some indicators which you copied into your account by the way if you would like to get the indicators i use just let me know here just ping a yes here into the chat box and i'm sending you uh, i'm sending them you all the, my charting layout to your inbox um, as well so now we've got another trend because those are a trend-based indicators offering you a trend to a market momentum you put in the moving average on the chart here you could choose different uh, periods moving average basically calculates let's start with a 50 as a general rule of a trend here it basically uses the recent 50 candles the recent 50 price moves here and then uh, kind of take, takes them uh, together and uh, formulates a, a moving average here which means you can see now a certain trend this one acts as support as resistance so if the market kind of comes from the lower area here and finds the 50 moving average seemingly you can see something right so the market doesn't really go higher but instead stops and then kind of starts moving higher whatever it is and then it falls and again you can see something you can see some price action where the market does not just fall through but finds some kind of some kind of momentum here weekly chart one week we nearly tagged this line and then within one week we tagged it 
went higher again and then fell subsequently. The same is true for this area. It tagged it, resistance, the market fell, the market fell. You can see there's always, or it has been always, or you say usually quite a lot of price action around this moving average. In this case, also the market uh, pushed through nothing really uh, of severe a uh, kind of market momentum but this one you can see the market came down found support kind of tacked around it resistance and then boom again here and then subsequently now the markets have kind of uh, turned higher so this is uh, something uh, interesting uh, here of course as well i'm getting, I'm getting some comments kachitan and sam of course will send them to you later on here after the session uh, where you can find the trend in the market and uh, the trend in the market, of course, defines as well what you should trade. For example, our recent trades, let's still make it a bit more practical here. You can follow me as well in practical life when you start trading as well. Dollar Japanese yen weekly chart. We can see the black line here uh, as the, the recent trend line. Let's say again, we start from the left of the chart here. We were trading up there and then to the right side of the market. We kind of end here clearly a falling trend you can see this with just also one eye or even half blindsided you would see here that the market is likely offering you falling momentum and let's connect the higher lines again i don't mind if the market spiked through for me it's the the candle and let me explain you the candlestick this for example a powerful tool it's, a, it's called a pin bar which means you have a small body there long wig to the upside and uh, you kind of could in general rule of thumb trade in the opposite direction of the of the of the long pin of the long wig so if you have this then uh, the market kind of pointed higher but fell during the same time it tells you that within this week the market went once to the upside subsequently came back down meaning as well there's a lot of buying pressure in the market but at the same time a lot of selling pressure in the market which means buyers are in control they bought the market up and then sellers were in control boom and the market ended basically where it started and that means subsequently you would in the next time frame or subsequent after uh, you would kind of expect the market to fall further which was happening at least boom falling again same story up down again boom falling 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 and so on and so forth the opposite is the case here you have a long wick to the downside the market subsequently could go higher that's what had happened you can see some magic stuff happening here and then upside again the market subsequently went lower again so on and so forth right now we can see the same story happening here and if we connecting these these higher areas and the point is you could maybe say as well you could kind of connect the the upper band of this uh, of this of this candle so that would give you like a maximum price range for me it's more like a the rejection of such right so that the market spiked through and fell again thereafter is what tells me there was a lot of selling pressure in this case which happened here subsequently a lot and hence i would say as well the long-term trend line could give us the guidance that the market might still be in for falling prices given the recent price action that we never really went beyond this area apart from this one here false breakout or some call it fake out where the market came higher here and then subsequently didn't kind of follow up with bullish momentum but instead fell back again here and offered us again falling prices so that's what we can see here right now one version of trade of trading it is basically whenever the market approaches this resistance area you simply sell the market and then kind of uh, offering potentially or getting of course potentially a falling a price momentum here let me try the 20 moving average i'm not sure if that makes any uh, any sense here but uh, we might see that the 20 offering us something not quite let me check and try the uh, uh, 10 here let me see what the 10 does uh, 10 moving average and not so much as well but uh, quite often you have a, a falling trend lines as well which coincide also with certain areas here but you can see the market still showing you falling trend momentum and these moving averages are a powerful tool if you don't know where the market is heading to you can just simply add them into your chart of any given length of course if you would like to get a a, a, a long-term strategy a long-term trend as well you can also put in the the uh, 200 moving average which is of course calculating the last 200 candles which is like poo like a lot of uh, a lot of market momentum here so 50 say i would say rule of thumb professional traders at least the ones working for the big banks for the deutsche banks the ubs's the city banks the jp morgan goldman sachs and so on they definitely look on like moving average of 20, 50, and definitely the long-term trend, the 200, 
which gives you a rule of thumb here, an idea, of course, here, the market in general has been falling, and hence uh, you should kind of really uh, um, use this as a powerful tool here to find at least a direction. And they can act, of course, as well as support and resistance. You can see as well here, there is some magic happening here, some touches around surrounding these these uh, these market uh, market areas and hence you could simply also use them some say the 50 is money the 20 is money when the market acts towards this zone in this case now rather as resistance should we see a breakout higher here of course with the rising prices also this uh, trend line changes a bit it will get a bit of a bend here as it uses the last 200 candles uh, uh, together to, to formulate this uh, this market move, but should the market gain momentum here, we definitely would see some sort of price action around this area here, because too many of the professional guys in the big world are keeping an eye on this uh, as well. Now, uh, next step here, identifying forex trends, fundamental with this technical analysis, we have to kind of keep in mind as well where the markets are moving to. So and now this is a bit of course now a blend of this market movement here, fundamental and also cross market analysis uh, at the same time to kind of get a bit of an insight here on how we identify trends. We're talking about the US dollar against the Japanese yen, uh, a currency, a currency uh, pair here. Impact of course as well, fundamental data from central banks, we get uh, economic data, US economy may be in good shape, Japanese economy may be in not so good shape, you could say. Uh, we can see a lot of money printing from the central bank as well, and uh, you can see as well the Japanese yen also a bit of like a, a risk off currency, um, mixing up a few things, but uh, the Japanese yen, for example, tends to perform well when markets in general are, are in very bad shape, when stock markets going down, a lot of markets the market participants buy the Japanese yen just because it acts as a so-called safe haven. Now, what's a safe haven? Safe haven currency or a safe haven asset in general is something where investors tend to to uh, to, uh, to buy some uh, some uh, some parts of when when they fear that markets uh, markets are very volatile and uh, and are very negative. Uh, for example, gold. You know, gold as uh, the utmost safe haven. Nowadays, you could even actually add in like cryptos or Bitcoin, for example, where you would say if the markets, if the stock markets turn down. Quite often you can see some demand in gold because if stock markets go down, trust issues, the markets will really blast away. Potentially investors tend to park their money in uh, or their funds in gold. They also tend to park their money in US dollars. They also tend to park their money in Japanese yen. So the, 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 the most, uh, uh, say, the most uh, the currencies which are safe haven currencies are, I would say, the Swiss franc as the number one. If the entire world goes, goes bust, then the Swiss franc usually gets a lot of appreciation. The US dollar as well as we could see throughout the, the first days of the pandemic here, and the Japanese yen in general as well. However, Japanese yen is a bit of a special case here because the central bank keeps weakening the currency. That's one point here. What do the central banks do? Of course, the central banks and their big impact keep keep weakening the, uh, their, their currency. Of course, on the uh, kind of looking at it from the outside world, uh, the Japanese yen is quite cheap. The Japanese yen is cheap. Japan can export their goods quite cheaply because you have a US dollar, which is valued as say one US dollar, and you can buy say 100 Japanese yen. You can you can buy a good for a certain price. If the if the Japanese yen is valued at uh, say 120, your product gets about 20% cheaper. So if you are holding US dollars and you want to buy something from Japan, a weaker Japanese yen supports the Japanese economy from the outside perspective. As you can see, more demand from the outside world. Vice versa, you can see something from the European, especially the German side here. Me in Singapore, the Singapore dollar is kind of rather a bit stronger. You can see a weaker euro. If you buy a Mercedes from Europe at a stronger, uh, with a stronger Singapore dollar, you can see quite a lot of inflows and quite a lot of cars being exported from Europe, mainly from Germany, of course as the currency plays a, a big role in this game as well. We've seen something recently with the pound. The pound has been weaker due to Brexit, but uh, let's not get too much into little topics here. The question is also, what's the fundamental versus the technical analysis? And what we've just talked about was the fundamental analysis in the background. That's not what the chart is telling me. The chart is telling me the technicals. I'm looking at levels. I'm looking at a resistance trend line. I'm looking at a, a pin bar candle. I'm looking at uh, uh, something like a trend. I'm looking at a, a moving average. So I look something what the 
I would say as a technical trader what the price is telling me because we as a technical traders we try and we we cannot really focus on price developments for us it's key what the price is telling us and that's also what kind of is uh, hidden at some point in these candlesticks it tells us uh, how the market acts during one time frame, how the market acts during one time. As I said, the powerful and the easiest one, uh, say about 20, 30 other candlestick patterns. You can just simply uh, Google them as well to get an overview uh, uh, how, how, how this works. Candlestick patterns, a a technical analysis. The most powerful one is uh, this one here, as I said, body, body to the upside, wick to the downside. Subsequently, the market quite often kind of tends to turn in the other direction and uh, so, so on and so forth but uh, for fundamental analysis of course the part is here and that's what the remaining topics kind of sum up here political news central banks and cross market analysis as well and of some sort is uh, that uh, of course the fundamental analysis means uh, what's the background information for the stock for the stock market it's a, a rather potentially news from the company how many how many goods they have uh, they have sold how many cars have uh, has a tesla sold in the last quarter in the last year how are they going to do with their employees are they kind of uh, having layoffs uh, how many products can they say how does uh, how does the overall market is being impacted by the news so i would say and that's a bit of maybe as well why a lot of traders especially new traders focus more on the technical analysis that's maybe the easier way to do because all the information is built in this one price us dollar against the japanese yen currently trading at 103.70 for one us dollar you currently get 103.70 uh, japanese yen for one if you're looking at the uh, at the euro dollar currency pair for one euro you currently get 121.35 us dollars and that means of course clearly you can see and get the price development uh, checked upon in the chart itself without kind of going on the website uh, checking for fundamental news and so forth so i would say start with the technical analysis to find your trends in the market with moving averages with trend lines and then also start once you see and observe certain trends what is the central bank doing for example and let's move to this point central banks impact the markets just uh, mainly of course with their interest rate and usually uh, it's like a river as well like a, a river a downstream for example finds its way easiest uh, for uh, for the financial markets it's the same the currencies tend to work this way when you have a higher interest rate say for example uh, here we had the, the US, which recently, or until say fairly recently, had a higher interest rate, much higher interest rate, certain three, four, uh, three or four percentage points higher than the eurozone. If you have a euro which offers you say 0.5% interest, and you buy euro dollar, you 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 accumulate in your in your portfolio in your account 0.5% interest, more or less in this currency, and you have to pay. The currency, uh, the in, sorry, the interest on the currency which you sell in this case the US dollar means you kind of you get a, a 0.5 percent and you get a 0.5 percent plus and you have to subtract maybe 4 percent, which means you every day kind of uh, lose the 3.5 percent interest uh, based on the yearly basis. Of course, not every day it's going to be calculated, but uh, on a yearly basis uh, divided by the trading days per year, that's what you can, what you can gain or what you can lose. And of course, the easy difference is as well if the interest rate in the US dollar is higher traders tend to of course invest rather in the us dollar as they would kind of if they short the market here if they sell the market if they sell the euro they have to pay 0.5 percent interest for the trade as long as they keep them on and you get you kind of or they would accumulate the four percent which means the net kind of would be rough more or less give or take 3.5 percent gain which means if you leave this trade on basically you sell the euro you buy the dollar you could have some appreciation of the trade itself because of uh, the market direction you bet, but you have some free money. It's a bit of like a, a dividend play, can't compare really, but it's like a dividend play. If you hold the stock for a certain period of time, you get dividend payouts. And in this case, also you have the interest rate differential, which is the so-called carry trade. One of the most famous one, by the way, was for a long time, the uh, Australian, Japanese yen, uh, New Zealand dollar, Japanese yen, some of these currency pairs because the Australian, let me move to it, but, uh, the Australian and uh, the New Zealand dollar had, a, had a, a fairly higher interest rate comparing it to the, uh, to the Japanese yen. So if you, if you do this carry trade, uh, then you can just simply buy the Aussie 
four, five, six, or even seven percent interest. Japan has been always more or less very low uh, at 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 zero uh, kind of. So you were you were getting potentially uh, accumulated uh, profit in a stronger Australian dollar, and you were paying then the interest on the Japanese yen, which means net you had a kind of a few uh, interest points here on a long currency trade here in the Aussie against the Japanese yen or the New Zealand dollar against the Japanese yen. Those are the famous ones uh, of recent history. Of course, you could go on further. Brazilian real, much higher interest rate as well, Russian ruble, uh, um, the South African rand. But the question, of course, remains then how safe is such a country? And that's now, of course, the political news and also elections. How safe is it to, uh, um, to invest in South Africa? Yes, you get a high interest. But, of course, with a high interest, usually comes the point that the risk also increases. You know, if it's going too much out of sight into the, into the uh, emerging market countries, you will simply get also you simply get also a kind of a, a different uh, momentum, different momentum uh, in your in your interest uh, uh, or say in your risk accordingly. Of course, uh, you could see that also a currency which uh, has a high interest rate is also potentially kind of depreciating a bit further as the news or as the, as the market momentum really it goes a bit out of uh, control. Say because uh, uh, the the say also Turkey, the Turkish uh, the Turkish uh, government or the uh, Turkish central banks would like to uh, kind of see a stronger Turkish lira. They doing it by uh, incre increasing the interest rate but on the other hand it's just like acting in the opposite way as a certain level is going to be kind of uh, too much on the extreme side so now i hope we've uh, we focused a bit on uh, where to find and source some trends either with the trend lines as i as i said here if you're looking at it from the uh, from the long term chart you could look at it from from this perspective as i said right so you could get to uh, uh, connect these high points and you can see falling prices and let's move further towards the next chapter here as well by by resistance areas or by say trend lines which give you an overview kind of the market keeps uh, keeps circulating around certain moving averages so this is what you can use of course fundamental analysis is also something where you can get a trend if you can see that the central bank is kind of rather bullish if you see that uh, the central banker says look we, we see our economy is in good shape. We can see some inflation happening. We're going to increase our interest rate uh, right now. And the outlook remains tilted to the upside, for example. That means we could see and expect potentially, aha, the central bank may be also in the next in the next meeting, usually like every other month or as say kind of per quarter, where they keep talking about it and keep saying, hey, we might see some interest rate increases the dot plots for the Federal Reserve in the US, for example, where they give you an idea of where the central bank might head to with the interest rate. That's some sort of a fundamental analysis where you would say, OK, I can expect that if everything kind of goes on like it does right now, that the US dollar would potentially see some interest rate increase over the next, say, a quarter over the next half a year. This could lead also towards an appreciation of the US dollar. As we kind of live in current times right now, as far as there's not at all any sort of increase going to be expected in central bank interest rates, it's uh, more like a currency war which is going on globally. All countries trying to depreciate their own currencies uh, in order to kind of uh, pay off their debt, in order to kind of really uh, find uh, uh, more more demand from the outside outside countries. As uh, of course, a stronger currency means as well, as I said earlier, uh, that uh, that uh, goods purchased from that country where the currency is uh, expensive say turn to be more pricey. Political news, as I said. The European side, for example, how much trust does the European Union see? I talked about it earlier as well regarding the safe haven, uh, Swiss, Switzerland, independent, doing wartime, usually staying, staying put, staying independent as well. That causes, of course, a lot of trust in Switzerland. It's called the safe, uh, the safe uh, country in the, in, the, in the mountainous area there. We can see also Japan has been kind of how often has Japan been bankrupt in the past, for example, is some sort of news where you say, OK, it's a fundamental positive news, politically very stable, similarly to the US, rather, you would say, where, of course, certain demand could be seen. And then central banks, as they how and how they attract, uh, how they attract, of course, potential buyers uh, with their longer term outlooks. Cross market analysis, we could also spend hours on that alone. Uh, interesting field as well, because we have a few things as well, which we could see. For example, the stock market, you can see the S&P 500, as of recently, has been moving a lot to the upside. 
which currency also moves to the upside. On the other hand, was definitely the Australian dollar, also the Australian dollar since uh, the pandemic, the crash in the stock markets here has been moving up. So kind of alongside. So this is a called risk on currency. If Australia does well, the Australian currency does well. And that usually also because in China, the economy is going well, as China exports a lot of their uh, ground or as a lot of what they uh, dig out from ground, iron ore, diamonds, precious metals and all that to, to China. And uh, if the economy in China does well, the Australian dollar typically does well. That's also one correlation you can see. You can see another one as well, um, oil market. If oil goes up, usually the price of the Canadian dollar also goes up, which means, for example, a dollar cut should rather go down. And that's what we could see also. Now you have the impact, of course, of the US dollar in general, but the Canadian dollar grew momentum alongside, of course, a stronger oil market, which we could see here in the recent in the recent uh, market momentum move as well. That's one thing as well, the Canadian dollar and oil, for example, also the US dollar, partly at least uh, the US dollar and, uh, and the, uh, the oil market. I would need to think of a few other currencies. We had it for some years that the pound was trading stronger alongside a stronger gold price. So gold moves up and the pound moved up in tandem as well. So we have a lot of things as well happening. And on the other hand, as, as I said earlier as well, if stock markets move down, usually the Japanese yen also moves up. So safe haven uh, ma um, uh, market participants and traders, investors alike, they sell their risky assets, the Dow Jones, the S&P, the Nasdaq, and they could chase rather the Japanese yen, the Swiss franc, and the US dollar, for example. And uh, also that correlation you can make. And if you can see some certain trends, maybe you can see also, like right now, the Australian dollar seemingly is trading higher, right? Connect the dots here, you can see market moving up, but we are not moving much higher right now. The market is in a, in a, in a kind of in a sideways market zone here. And uh, as long as the market trends sideways, we could see that uh, the sideways momentum might act here and the resistance might take over. So we could see maybe the Australian dollar could fall maybe a bit. A slightly falling Australian dollar could also be an impact here for the stock market could say, okay, the S&P 500, trending higher but if the s p 500 does not trend higher and instead maybe kind of uh, crosses this upside trend line and falls we could see maybe okay s p at a very much support area say given the fact we would be here with the australian dollar fall uh, that could be an impact also for the s p which also could have fallen further and uh, with this correlation also you can kind of uh, do some analysis and look at this as well you can kind of do it uh, ba based on the past uh, as well here if you look at the s p 500 uh, chart and you compare it uh, with the australian dollar a uh, chart for example you can see uh, you can see clearly that there is some uh, some sort of uh, some sort of correlation see the market moves up and whenever there were some certain dents here quite often they were also happening in uh, in uh, in uh, in the in the in the uh, currency market alike 21st december 2020 and where was this 21st December 2020, you see, you can see stock market went down at the exact same time, not then with the same candlestick, but a similar move. Also, the Australian dollar went lower and uh, so on and so forth. So there is a lot of uh, correlations as well, which you can use. For example, you see, okay, the Aussie is still up high, but the stock market so shows signs of falling momentum. You could maybe say, okay, the stock market has already started to fall. The likelihood that the Australian dollar also it picks up with this and also falls is pretty much there and that's then where you can say okay cross market analysis helpful for a new trend and that's the last uh, <clears throat> chapter i'd like to talk about like to find some practical uh, market momentum here the market turns down of course then you would maybe sell the market alongside as i said here <clears throat> if the stock market offers you some falling price momentum and the australian dollar not yet you could take this and say haha now i know <clears throat> the likelihood Sorry, some water. The likelihood that the Australian dollar will follow through this falling momentum is pretty much there. Now, there you go. You have a pretty much good trading opportunity and trade the market accordingly. Vice versa, if you have uh, the oil market, which keeps also being at the resistance point, like right now, this box, yeah, in the recent uh, couple of trading days, the oil market kept trading sideways, potentially turns higher, potentially also turns lower. If we, should, if we see a breakout here to the upside or the downside, we could take this into consideration for our US dollar against the Canadian dollar. You can see it and look at it also. And we have the exact same uh, market momentum happening here 
right now. You have a bit of a trading box coincides with what we can see here, oil and dollar cat. Should the, should the oil markets turn lower, a weaker Canadian dollar could be the outcome. And that said, we could see the dollar cat turning higher, meaning the dollar appreciate potentially against the Canadian dollar. A weaker Canadian dollar here means dollar cat turns higher. A weaker Canadian dollar means oil market turns lower, hence the market could turn lower. So for, for, for this certain reason also, uh, we can observe that uh, that is why the market trends or ta tra uh, is paused, paused with this within this certain trend here right now. As we can see, this long-term trend down in dollar, Canadian dollar here, as I said, right? It came potentially to an end, at least for some time here. The question remains now, where does it go further? And that's where we can apply these uh, correlations uh, as well. Now, back to the, to the point here, up, down market, sideways and market not moving. Let me kind of uh, quickly go over the market not moving a strategy. Of course, we need market momentum to move, yeah, because we are betting on a direction. If we trade the spot market, which is what we do, we, we are betting on the market going up or going down. If you want to bet, bet on a market not moving, you need to play with options. It's a bit of a trickier play here. Now at BD Swiss, we don't offer options and options trading as well. It is kind of more for a much, much more advanced trading and uh, market momentum. Uh, ping me if you would like to get more info on this, but uh, that means as well, you have certain financial products where you can bet on a market, market, say you can bet on the market not moving, where you kind of sell the upside or where you sell the downside. And if the market does not move, then you can make some money with this as well. But if you if you are trading the way we do, you need a moving market because we trade on we 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 have the kind of the easier approach to the markets. I would say where we bet on the direction of the market because we bet on the market potentially moving up or we bet on the market potentially moving down. So one trading strategy. And let's start with this also from practical pattern here right now. We can see here the dollar cat currency pair. If I believe tonight, and that kind of comprehensively should sum up all the stuff we've just talked about, we have the Federal Reserve with the FOMC Open Market Committee. They come out with the interest rate, no change expected. But the wordings from Jerome Powell and his crew, follow me during the webinar, 8 p.m. Central European time tonight. Uh, we can see, um, and then he'll come out with some comments and he'll say, oh, we're looking at the uh, depreciating currency potentially on the US dollar. Uh, we can see uh, the economy is happening. We can see that there's not much progress in the pandemic, COVID-19 potentially. And I would expect a weaker US dollar as the outcome. A weaker US dollar as the outcome would mean we can follow potentially with this recent long-term trend. Remember, we started with a trend, market starts from the from the left upside and kept falling across these, uh, how is it, uh, across the, uh, um, the April last year. If I'm looking at it from the timestamp perspective, April last year, we were trading at 140. Now we are trading at 126. So depreciation in the US dollar, appreciation in the Canadian dollar, and this within the long-term trend. Now we're looking at the recent trend here. We can see where there's a resistance line, the one I told you about, right? And as long as we kind of keep not pushing beyond this resistance line, I would favor falling prices. If I fall, if I favor falling prices, I would get short in the market, which means to sell and would build a strategy around it. As I said also, also earlier, there's a pin bar candle here, small body, wick to the upside, market falling. Small body, not perfect, but with a bit of an exception and uh, analysis, you can see also wick to the upside, market falling. Again here, that was yesterday market rising, falling momentum. And how do we build a trade? We just simply wait for the market to give us the insight. So we wait. Quite a lot of the times in the markets, I don't trade. Actually, I wait and observe what's the outcome. More, most of you might kind of really, uh, uh, might really look for trade. Frank, give me something to trade. I need to do, I need to buy, I need to sell. For me, it's just like, I'm waiting for the exact perfect moment and we might get this later in the day as well here, where I see the trend line respected, the market falling. And my strategy says, should the market continue to fall again, then I would sell, because this is the mother candle, this is the market momentum respecting this trend line, the market has been falling. And then subsequently, today, that's the daily chart. Today, we can see the market has not really fallen further, but should the market continue with this downtrend, then I would like to sell, but I only, enter in this trade when the market confirms this. Right now we might say, okay, Frank, but if I sell the market now, I get a better entry price. 
Yes, but also you are still above this trend line. What if the market continues moving higher? Then basically you have a, you're ending up with a looting, a losing trade. And I'm waiting for the market to turn lower first to give me the confirmation. And I would only sell when the market confirms that it's trading lower. When do I know that the market is trading lower? When it continues showing me lower prices than yesterday. So if the market goes here, based on this candle yesterday, today so far, retracement higher as we call it, if the market starts approaching this zone here, exactly 126.80, 126.85, I'm going to sell the market. If the market then, and that's my order here, if the market then does not give me what I, what I expect, I'd like the system to close my position, and that's referred as this stop loss, um, just above the high area, 127.65. 127.65, but should the market instead give me what I expect, I would follow up with the falling trend. The falling trend offers falling price momentum, and that's what I would say here, 126.11, 126.10, say, 126.10 as one of the easy targets is where I would like to take some profit. So should we lose this trade, the system closes or the broker closes my position here. It's going to be a close because the market goes in the opposite direction. We could maybe adjust it a bit lower. I think we don't need to have a, this wide stop loss. This here kind of helps our rewards to risk ratio. Not coming to this right now. That's a topic of another webinar. But should the market really fall, we can get profit down here and smaller loss up here. And now we have a trade. For a, and that's the direction, for a down market. The same is uh, true also for an upwards trending market. We need to kind of check now which market is trending to the upside. Australian dollar, for example, here, let's look for some sort of a breakout trade. We have the market from the lower area, the higher area, trend clearly up. And then we can look for some certain counter trends here. For example, this one, the market was rising and then falling, resistance, 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 attention, resistance, boom, there we go. The market pushed towards the resistance, went lower once again, confirmed the break higher, and that's where we buy. So you buy exactly here, and then you wait for the market to move higher, your stop loss, you put a bit lower and then leave the market run towards the next levels. For example, that's just a, something for a rising trend. Might confuse you a little bit with the trend lines here right now, but once you kind of see that the market stops falling again and uh, make your analysis accordingly, you can kind of hop on this trade and then leave the trade on as well for some growing price momentum. That's one thing. And then of course as well, the most important and most interesting as well, what happens and how do we trade it when the market moves sideways? Usually the market doesn't move sideways like a lot, but it moves sideways maybe within certain time frames. We can go back to the same currency pair here, the Australian dollar, and to the uh, to the recent uh, to the recent uh, uh, history as well. But we kind of deviate from it. We don't look at it from the daily chart, but maybe from the four-hour chart, and we can see there's a certain box we could mark in. Whenever the market is a support, we buy. Whenever the market is as resistance, we sell perfecting it a bit <clears throat> by marking these zones. Yeah, you can see support, the market didn't fall, didn't fall, didn't fall, instead went higher and vice versa. It didn't rise more, it didn't rise more, instead it was falling and we have this center line and we can say, okay, whenever the market, that's a bit, <clears throat> a bit of a dodgy now because the trend only started here, but with the beginning of the trend here, we observe, aha, support, resistance, and there we go, again, same level, kind of same level here. Then we see, okay, we buy. When we buy here, we could exit some of the position at the center line. And if the market really retain, returns here, we could close the remaining position at the higher area, vice versa. Now we get it for the first, second, and the third time. Now we are smart and understand, okay, the trend is seemingly there. Whenever the market is at the resistance, we sell. Of course, not at the exact resistance spot, maybe at some shorter time frame. We kind of looking at it and see like, okay, the market does not rise further. We can see, we can sell maybe, you know, and then we find some entries. It doesn't need to be exactly up here. We wait for the confirmation first and then subsequently hop into the position and uh, trade the market, sorry, sell the market accordingly until the center line or beyond even, which would have worked as well. Same story, clear trend you can see here. We are falling, 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 falling. Ah, we've fallen to the support area. The market starts rising. 
breaks the trend line, then we buy and so on and so forth, right? So this is some sort of a, an easy, actually an easy idea of how you trade. Of course, if the market goes up, example, Australian dollar to the US dollar, we buy only, we don't sell, we buy only. If the market goes down, opposite direction, that's exactly what we've talked about here with the dollar Japanese here. Now this might be might sound a bit easy in the, in theory, but of course as well, that's exactly how we do it. We, we sell here and we wait for the market to fall. If the market has fallen, say enough for you, you maybe close your position and wait for the market again to approach this trend line. And all the time, just like when the market goes higher, you sell, put your stop loss slightly above and wait for the market to fall and so on and so forth. And that's exactly what we do, especially also what we do today, what we will do. And with this, I'm coming to an end right now, exactly 45 minutes of uh, talking from my side here. And um, that's what we do here today. My appreciation, oh, sorry, my expectation today is like a weaker US dollar. And I would say when the market gives us the con confirmation here around these moving averages later, we can just simply sell again 10360 as i repetitively said already could be an interesting level where we could sell the market again should we sell the market later stop loss at the higher area and then boom let the market go lower guys thanks a lot for your time uh, everyone stayed in the webinar session which is a bit of a confirmation that i was not only bothering you with a lot of nonsense. I hope I gave you a lot of practical examples as well. What we've learned today was actually how we identify trends because we need to know where the market goes to in order to identify where we should trade to. Of course, if the market only falls, we shouldn't buy. If the market only rises, we shouldn't sell, but we should find buy the dips or sell the high points, the resistance points. And that's what we did with the moving averages and with trend lines. Of course, we said technical analysis, that's kind of a price. Yeah? We know the price. We know where the price is heading to. That's uh, our information, but we should base it with fundamental news, political news, South Africa, negatively maybe Zimbabwe, hyperinflation. You don't want to buy a currency which weakens all the time because uh, politically maybe not stable. South Africa, Turkey, Brazil, you know, those countries which might be Russian ruble, not be really as stable as US dollar, Swiss franc, Japanese yen, central banks, and of course, their forward guidance, what they tell us in the next quarter, in the next couple of months, in the next years, we are expecting to leave our interest rate at low levels. Okay, that means the likelihood of them increasing a, um, a, a, an interest rate could not affect us potentially much or vice versa. And of course, as well, we should keep an eye on, uh, first of all, maybe stock market and Australian dollar, oil price and Canadian dollar in order to see which one has maybe already moved one example I gave you was uh, that uh, here maybe the S&P was kind of weaker and uh, the Australian dollar has not weakened maybe yet. So maybe that's kind of something to kind of give us an, an insight here. And should the, uh, should the S&P 500 kind of follow up with bullish momentum here? Also some practical example, maybe should the S&P 500 start to gain momentum? We could also maybe see that also the Australian dollar breaks higher and could maybe trade it accordingly. And then of course we found out when and how the market moves, different strategies. Sideways strategy means we kind of sell at the highs, buy at the lows towards a certain center line and maybe beyond. And up or downtrend means as well, if we're having a downtrend here, like the dollar against the Japanese yen, we really have to wait and sit on our position to wait for the market to fall further. Because magic happens quite often that at a certain trend line, also the market falls so uh, bigger than it kind of rises, right? Which is why uh, why we would uh, kind of really kind of only apply falling uh, price uh, trades here, falling momentum trades here in this regard. Guys, thanks a lot for your time. Um, Sam, if I plan for a medium term trade over a couple of days based on tech analysis on daily charts, do I need to worry about support and resistance levels at lower time frames as well um, as daily ones, such, such as the 30 minute or only look on the daily chart? Great question, Sam. What I tend to do is like I tend to find entries on the sorry, I, I, I like to, to find trends on the longer time frame. Say if the market goes up, if the market goes up here, as we can see, the Australian dollar, I like to kind of find the entries where I could buy at a lower time frame. Usually I skip one, which means the daily chart trend is moving up. I like to try and kind of find entries on the hourly chart. Where's the hourly chart going? Hourly chart a bit falling. So I would maybe say, okay, if the hourly chart breaks this area, I would maybe buy. And the buyer would put at 
7750 say 7750 is where I would maybe buy where I would see okay we've kind of tested the lower end the daily trend is higher so that's how I would trade it but if I'm then in our or in my buy trade here and if the market given the fact it's going higher I would not look on a resistance area on the hourly chart and would say okay the market turns around or oh, I should sell I keep it I keep it I keep an eye on it sometimes but I would say you should rather focus on the same chart on the same time frame when when you do especially such longer term trades makes sense the most do you use some statistic technical analysis um no statistics not quite actually more also good question I I don't really do this I mostly focus on the charts and the news around it as said Today we have the headlines from the central bank. We have the headlines from the Federal Reserve with the FOMC. So I'm staying on the sidelines for now. I would kind of wait first in order and then to kind of see where the markets might head to and what might be the exact, the exact outcome in the end. So I would wait, uh, of course, first uh, in order to position myself thereafter and hence would not apply any potential uh, trades here so far and uh, would, just, uh, would just wait for the forward guidance. We would potentially at least uh, get from the central bank so that's my my analysis here for the day that's my support here tomorrow we have the same webinar session in a german language also morgen die gleiche session noch mal in deutscher sprache dann für sie so looking forward guys thanks a lot and i hope you could uh, kind of take a few bits and pieces here out of this webinar if any further questions let me know i've uh, received some uh, comments here and uh, for these comments i would send you of course here uh, the uh, the uh, um, the uh, the indicators if you'd like to get them uh love the seminar thanks a lot says sam harold says what time frame you recommend to use for checking entry points depends on your on your time frame would you like to trade i think the daily chart is just um, the basic idea the daily chart or the weekly chart to to give you some general ideas and if the market another idea if the market does not move a lot i would recommend kind of go on the shorter term time frames as it gives you like a very good idea on how we could expect the market to move uh, for possible good entry and uh, exit points guys gotta have to have to go right now thanks a lot for your time hope you had some fun here talk to you later see you tonight for our fmc webinar here